Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, Select Board of the Town of Sunderland. First item up is a, it's uh, August 30th, uh, 6.35, we'll call it to order. First thing up, uh, the Board of Health is meeting next door. We asked the chair to come in to uh, give an update. So, Caitlin, you want to give an update? Sure, good evening. Um, Caitlin Roth from the Board of Health. Uh, we, we are uh, currently meeting and our first item that uh, agenda item that we discussed were mask recommendations versus mandates um, for town buildings and or town businesses. We discussed what the neighboring towns were doing. Um, we discussed our numbers. Our numbers are very low. Um, we currently have two cases. Um, we've been holding out two, three um, for the entire summer since July. Uh, our first two cases in the beginning of July came from Provincetown, uh, two vaccinated people, mm. um, and uh, that you know, fizzled out very quickly. That was our only uh, cases that came from the cave. And um, we've really been holding um, the only multiple case count we've had to so it was really um, not fun, but, <laughs> you know, and of course we have the students came back this weekend, but you know, they're all um, seem to be uh, doing well. Uh, UMass again is uh, doing great communication. So, uh, you know, we had a wonderful year last year, so I think we're gonna, we're gonna do well again this year. Um, but because you know, we can't rely on just on this case, uh, we're such a fluid town, we're going to look at the entire area. While our area is still doing wonderfully, it is raising at a pretty steady rate. Not our town, but the area. So what we've decided is we are not going to make a full mask mandate, but what we are going to do is uh, we want to uh, mandate uh, masks in town buildings, uh, indoors in town buildings. And um, we are going to make a mask recommendation for the <coughs> businesses um, in Sunderland. And uh, we're going to get letters out starting tomorrow, and we want to make this effective starting Friday. Obviously, schools are out on Friday. It's a long weekend. People come back Tuesday. <laughs> we're going to be doing a lot of education this week, this weekend, it's, you know, and once again, our philosophy and our philosophy with the police department and everybody around is education. You know, we, we, we tend to talk and inform rather than penalize in any way. Um, that's our goal. Our goal is to get people to wear masks. Our goal is to get people to uh, get vaccinated. Speaking of vaccinations, um, as of the last count, which was last Friday, we have 2,410 people in town fully vaccinated. And um, I think we, none of us math majors, um, they said we think it's about 67%, which is uh, pretty good. Our largest population vaccinated is 20 to 39 year olds. Hmm. We have 1,008 20 to 39 year olds in town vaccinated. Um, and then the next largest group is uh, 40 to and up. Okay. So um, <coughs> about, uh, about 1,200. So that's good. And 12 to 19, we have 143 of them. So okay. that's not bad for that's our good. kids. So uh, mm -hmm. we're doing, doing well there. Uh, so I hope to get more kids vaccinated um, as soon as we can. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Caitlin. So, so basically, your summation starting Friday, you're going to recommend a uh, mask in the town hall and town buildings. No, we're mandating masks. Mandating, and recommending them for the businesses. For the businesses inside, in, you know, any, any inside in, inside um, public places, we would recommend, and for town hall and town owned buildings, we would mandate. Okay. So I got a question about the 2,400. Are those of people eligible to be vaccinated or of everybody? Does that include like newborn up to age 12? 
Or is that only from age 12 on? No, those are people who actually received right. the vaccination. But then when you say the 3,600. 3,600 are the, the census. Okay, so that. that is That's our total population. Right. Total so, population, people who live in the house. So even people who are not Correct. eligible to be Correct. vaccinated. So it's okay. The population. Yeah. And that would be those are the people who could catch COVID. Right. <laughs> you know, no, so. right. No, I'm just trying to figure out. Sure. If we have that. The number well, of that's actually. A good statistic, and um, maybe I'll work on that. <laughs> of the <laughs> eligible population. Under 12s. Right. That's a good, that's a good statistic. Yes. Just a, a clarifying question. I think you've touched on it, but you mentioned businesses. So uh, common areas in like apartment complexes, would <clears throat> people be expected to wear masks at like in like the gym or? It's are you, recommended. Uh, right. The yeah, recommendation is any indoor. Okay. Yes. Thank we you. Would, we would recommend based upon the Delta variant and how um, <clears throat> virulent it is and how um, we are seeing complete transmission through vaccinated people. And what we're trying to do is we are, luckily we are seeing with the vaccinations, not serious disease with vaccinated people and death with vaccinated people. But what we're, the masks, what we want the masks to do is to keep the transmission right. down. Because we can be transmitters essentially right. for, we're not to somebody who's not vaccinated. Kill the vaccinated people, but the vaccinated people <clears throat> can just keep this going. And the way to stop this is to keep it from being transmitted. Thank you. And also to make close that gap for the unvaccinated. And the more we get vaccinated, the less this variant. The reason that the whole variant has started to spread is because people weren't vaccinated. And it gives a much larger pool of people to infect. And every yep. time it infects a new person, it changes ever so slightly. Yep. And then that's how the, another variant pops up. And there is another variant coming. Yeah, I heard about that. The Lambda variant. <clears throat> yep. And it, it has, there is, it, it's reached the United States, but not, has not really spread. Um, and so that's, we want to try to, if we Keep can stop one. COVID, right. you can stop the variants. Um, I mean, there, it's always going to be with us, but so are colds. So our a coronavirus is a cold virus, yep. but we want to get it tamped down. So that's kind of where we're at, and that's transmission. So. Thank you, Caitlin. Okay, thank you guys. Thanks. Uh, Lori, is there anything you wanted to add, our EMD director? Well, I agree with what she said. Um, just in public buildings, not in public spaces where you can already distance yourself you don't if you're not going to require a mask right inside, inside. yes right. just inside right. and are we going to think about maybe it's too early to say this but a date to look at it again oh i'm so sorry yes we've already put that it's in our minutes um we are going to formally review it every 30 days but informally every monday um we're going to review it based upon the metrics and the and the numbers. Okay. And if, honestly, if need be, we'll review it even before every week. Um, if, if something happens. Yeah, if we have like a huge UMass right. spike or something. We're in contact, our public health nurse, um, and Lori, you know, you and I can be <clears> in contact on email e very easily, but we're in contact with the, re the South County, the region, pretty, um, I haven't say daily. So if anything starts to shift, we will definitely review that. We're going to review any type of uh, mitigating um, actions. And we would contact the Board of Selectmen. I'd contact the town um, administrator. And yeah. we would get out uh, a, t a robocall, We'd get, you know, to try to get the town involved. Because I could make a mandate, I could make anything, but without input and involvement from the community, <coughs> that's gonna, you know, mm -hmm. it's not going to work. So, and Lori, with Lori's help, I think we could, this is a shifting situation. And when things improve, no, no one wants to keep these masks on. You know, we're going to shift it the other way, too. Absolutely. Okay. 
Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Lori, also. Okay. Uh, so I'd like to uh, now um, start our meeting. And uh, the first thing is uh, I'd like us all to rise for a second um, as a, um, a moment of silence for the 13 young members of our military that uh, lives were taken from them. I, I it, it's um, kind of hits um, that five of them 20 years old, um, that's when the 9-11 first started. They, they were just born 20 years, we're still in fighting this basically same people for the same reason. Um, but when they, they signed up to join the Marines, um, the Navy to become a, a devil dock, and the U.S. Army, they didn't have a choice on where they would be deployed and where they would be at any given time. They, they, their country asked them to serve, and they st stood up. And you um, notice that there was a, um, a, few, a few Marine Corps sergeants. You don't get the rank of a sergeant in the Marine Corps by saying present at your daily roll call. They're, they're the NCOs are the backbone of the Marine Corps, and they are the best of the best. And I know we say that, but they truly are. And I wish, on the national level, we would stop fighting over what and start looking at our young people and be appreciative when they lay their lives on the line every day to maintain our freedoms that we proclaim that are so important to us. But then we start fighting and we forget those that are out there protecting our freedoms. Thirteen families will be witnessing the folding of the flag that comes off from their coffins of our 13 young warriors. And I would just like to stand for a second in remembrance of those. To continue, um, the minutes of August 9th, 2021. Motion on the minutes. Aye, second. We have a motion made and seconded to accept the minutes as presented for August 9th. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero. New business. We had the uh, COVID-19 update. Jeff, did you have anything to add to that? Um. I guess the, the only question I wanted to ask the board was if that, if you wanted to continue holding hybrid meetings um, with masks, with social distancing, if you wanted to go back to fully remote meetings. Um, well, we can do them with masks, I guess, like in here. And, you know, and yeah. until. I'm with, comfortable with it. Yeah. Yeah. Mask. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Great. Looks like the uh, town clerk has her annual single precinct affirmation. Jeffrey, you want to review that? Uh, yes, uh, the census data came back and Sunderland's population, I believe, decreased by 21 people, I think, um, around that. And so size why that that's the official number um i think given the housing developments we're a little suspicious of that mm -hmm. but the bottom line is that it, it's not a large enough population to require more than one precinct so annually we need to certify that um the select board agrees to continue as a single precinct if, if that's what you want to do <clears throat> okay motion motion uh, motion to um certify as a single precinct yep 
I second. <clears throat> Jeez, I didn't get the I didn't get the memo, Jeff. Did you send a memo out about wearing purple tonight? I didn't get that memo. It was either. probably one of those emails. Look at she, didn't she, get out. She, <laughs> look, he's got a purple watch band. She's I got a purple, even had purple watch band on. and so got a purple it. pen. <laughs> Jeff. It, it's that email trouble. It's we that were email issue. Right. Yeah. The server. I emailed Jeff. And you got a purple necklace too? Yeah. I don't have a purple pen. All right, we have motion made and seconded for the single <laughs> precinct for voting in the town of Sunderland. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Jeffrey 3-0. Uh, notary insurance discussion. Jeff? Yeah, so uh, a few weeks ago, the issue came to our attention that our insurance policy does not cover notary services provided to the public. Um, the clerk and I are both notaries, um, and we can certainly notarize town documents that we need for contracts and uh, grant applications and things like that. Um, but we were also performing that service to members of the public who would walk in and need documents notarized. Uh, so I did get a quote from the Massachusetts in I'm gonna, Maya Inter yeah. Insurance Agency. Um, and it would a local insurance agency. That's what I thought, but I didn't know what interlocal yep. <laughs> um, So it, it would cost about a thousand dollars to provide us with insurance that would cover any sort of liability for notarizing documents to the public. So um, before agreeing to take on that insurance coverage. Um, you know, I think it's a valuable service, service that we offer yeah. to the town. People can just walk in and, exactly. and get things notarized. Although we do appreciate if people call ahead of time to make sure that we're available. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think that it's something that, that a number of towns do. Some of them have stopped because there is a cost associated now with, with providing that service. So uh, it would be about $1,000. To, to ensure the clerk and I so that we could perform that service. So I just wanted to make the board aware of it and um, find out if you would prefer that we do continue providing that service and, and getting insurance for that. I, I don't have a problem with the insurance. I, w I would, what, what, what I'd recommend is that it's a free service to town of Sunderland residents, but then a fee to whatever the standard fee is to people from out of town. Yeah, that seems yeah, reasonable. Sounds, that's reasonable. How many items do you notarize a year? Are we talking in the hundreds, in the thousands, in the uh, dozens? Q, between the two of us, I, I, I'm sure Wendy does the majority yeah. of them. I've done a handful, um, less, probably less than 10. I only got notarized in November. Um, mm. It's hard so. getting that person to swear that you're a good good uh, character isn't it it took a, a few people <laughs> no um but the, yeah I, I think that that's probably also depressed because of covid and people right. just not people coming in so um i i can find that out for you but i, yeah, I no, would say it's probably at least at a minimum one a week that we're doing okay we're not talking that this is like a constant flow of people in here doing it no So no objections to insurance. Yeah. Okay. No. And, yep. Great. But I but I would set up the well, fee structure for someone not in town, and and again it's a, and again for seniors it's a good you know seniors are they're getting legal documents notarized and such so I, it's a good service and 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 residents as well so okay great. Marijuana host community agreement. Yeah. So. We um, have been approached several times by several different organizations, sort of asking about our our bylaws and whether or not the town was interested in hosting a retail marijuana establishment. One seems to be very serious about it. Um, it's something that hasn't come up in my time as town administrator, mm -hmm. so I didn't see any existing policy for how to review um, or how we want that process to go. So um, I took a, a chance at, at crafting after talking to some neighboring communities about what they do. Um, by the way, I should probably mention, I, I was 
pretty involved in setting up Amherst and, and their legalization. Um, they had a lot of interest, and so the process created in Amherst was a little bit more competitive given the um, zoning in Sunderland and the amount of people who have contacted me. I don't think that that's necessary to set it up. So um, basically, there, it's a four-step process. One, they're interested. They come in here first to introduce themselves to the select board, say, here's where we'd like to open the location. Um, it, it, we went, through, we talked to zoning, it's good zoning, we, we have an idea, um, a chance for you to ask questions about their business, where they are, you know, any of those things. Um, assuming there's no reason to stop at that point, the select board, uh, I'm suggesting that the select board would appoint one of you to negotiate the host community agreement with myself. Um, alternatively, if you want to authorize me to do it, um, that the I know the town manager in Amherst was the the signatory and chief negotiator for that. Um, then there would be a community outreach meeting that's required by the Cannabis Control Commission regulations. They have to notify abutters of the proposed property. Uh, it's basically an opportunity for the public to hear about what they're planning, ask any questions, voice any concerns. Um, after that. Uh, assuming nothing again pops up that would be a reason uh, to deny it we would entering a host community agreement negotiations and I talked to Waitley and basically they said we have our you know uh, template agreement that with the terms that we'd like to see we send it to them they redline it send it back and then meet with the negotiation team to discuss um, the terms and then uh, once there are agreed upon terms, they it would come back to the select board to vote whether or not to sign it and sign the host community agreement. And then we'd also have to, you know, affirm to the Cannabis Control Commission that they had a community outreach meeting and that they have a host community agreement so they could proceed with their application. So that that's sort of the, the basic gist of it. Um, certainly open to any suggestions or feedback or questions on the process. And then... Uh, on SharePoint, I uploaded sort of the draft host community agreement yeah. that Amherst uses, um, and for the most part, it's it's a lot of legalese, and you have to pay on time, and this and that. You know, there are a couple of uh, likely points of negotiation, which are you the the community can have up to 3% in the host community agreement of gross sales that the community collects as part of the agreement. Um, one thing that I won't say is universal, but most communities put in is a charitable uh, contribution to either a local charity or a charity that works within the town. Um, and that amount varies greatly um, from I, I think five thousand dollars to I think in some communities it's six figures the, like pretty significant um, charitable contributions but any sort of feedback on, on the host community agreement things that you'd like to see in there obviously there's a preference for using local contractors and local vendors if they're going to be changing the space or ordering things um, so I guess I just wanted to, to kick off the, the conversation and see if, if you had thought at all about how you would like to see that process go and if there are certain things that you would want in the host community agreement or, I don't know, we, I don't think we've had any conversations about cannabis yeah. since I've started, so I don't. Um, it's been quiet in that wanted, respect. Yeah. Yeah. But it is, I think, a, a, another way to generate revenue from the town. Um, the town the town meeting already passed the 3% local option sales tax. So should one open in town, we would be receiving revenue from that. I will note that the host community agreement, by law, you can only spend the money to mitigate um, the effects of having a retail establishment. So a lot of communities, 
do it for um, drug prevention or dr you know um, rehab or something like that to or in school education for children um, and I think that there are also other communities that use it for policing um, and then there are some that just add it to the general fund um, so I just also keep in mind of how, how if you have any thoughts of how you'd like to see the funds spent if we do uh, negotiate a host community agreement with okay. community impact fees any initial thoughts I just like the the building they would go into and stuff or is there any thing that it has to be a freestanding building or can it be part of a no strip uh, mall type strip mall. thing it yeah so the and I'm trying to remember exactly I believe it's schools and daycares are the only places um, and maybe houses of worship but I'm not positive Certain about that and it has to be 500 feet from property line to property line yeah um, but no other communities added other restrictions like you can't be in a doctor's office or near a pharmacy or yeah. um, but I didn't see or near residences yeah it just that's not i mean when you drive through amherst you drive through these other towns and you see them the majority of them are a freestanding building yes i just think securely not in alaska yeah all right it I, depends yeah it depends on the some are and yeah i think there's isn't there one in um well no there are some but i'm saying some, the majority yeah. of them are a freestanding are, yeah. building and it just seems I think probably because of traffic and Security stuff. Security-wise, that's yep. probably a little easier, too. Yeah. Yes. So, I, I mean, I I know that the regulations have pretty strict security measures. Um, they, they have to meet and talk to the police chief, and I advise them to do that yeah. sooner rather than later. Um, I know that one of the places in Amherst is in a conjoined building um, on College Street, and so it's possible you yeah. know that with other businesses yeah. um it, and it wouldn't be unique to the area if it happened I, I think the one isn't there one planned in deerfield um right at oh there was something in the paper and that yeah five and ten yes. and 116 across from that I thought there was going to be two like a medical one and a there retail. might be but yeah. i think that's also sort of a, a building with several yep. businesses in it Okay, uh, I'm trying to remember when, we, when they did voted on the zoning. Did, were there any restricted? I'm trying to remember if they. I don't remember. I was just. I was just going. To, I was just seeing. It's, it was uh, restricted. It's in we restricted C, them to certain areas. C one and C two. Yeah. Um. And then, depending on the size of the building, whether or not it was allowed by right or with a special it's permit. A permit. Yeah. Um, and then I think the only other restrictions I saw were the buffer zones from from schools. Which yeah, I mean that's I think I think those apply to like alcohol retail too. I think that, yeah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Because I mean when you think about it, it's a similar type of business really. You know. Yeah. I I think it's a good start, Jeff. And, and again, I, I I mean this is, you know, we've always talked about. We have talked when they first. When it first came about, and and Sunderland wasn't one of the first wave of, and we and our thoughts were, well, let's see what other towns are doing, because there, there is no, there is absolutely no reason to recreate. Yeah, exactly. the uh, the planning board just doesn't know what they have by making the bylaws and kind of defining where they can put them, you know, where where they can be, where they can go. So, um, so we define we define the where. Uh, kind of what it looks like. So now, now uh, what we have is we have something to go. I, we can review it. We can talk, share your ideas with, uh, share your ideas with Jeff over the next couple of weeks, and also, um, and and now we can start talking to community. Let, let the community know. Okay. You know, so that's good. Good start. Okay. Good start. Um, FY twenty one deficit. Deficit coverage. Yep. Yes. Um, so just wrapping up the last fiscal year, um, 
typically for for various reasons there um, are accounts that wind up in deficit and there are accounts that have a surplus and uh, we sort of go through and and make up for those deficits so that at the end of the year we have uh, balanced books um, the finance committee which also typically signs off on these coverages is meeting tomorrow night um, but given that I don't think the select board's meeting again until the 13th, um, if you wanted to vote to take action on that, um, you could, or you could wait until after the finance committee makes their, or, or a contingent vote, I guess, <laughs> on the finance committee or bring it back. Um, but the, uh, we do need to do that in order to, to wrap up last fiscal year. Okay. Yeah, it's just going through. It looks. It doesn't look too bad. No. No. See, when Crystal won election, her does her uh, selectman salary went way up. Oh yeah. Yeah, it says right there, <laughs> Crystal. Did you read that? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the benefit of having the election before town meeting, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. Say yeah. It. All right. All right. Yeah. So yeah. There, so you're going to have uh, finance committee look at that. Did they're scheduled to have a meeting? To they're scheduled about? to meet tomorrow uh, evening. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. So uh, do you want me to bring it back on the yep, the 13th? Absolutely. Or, okay. Uh, board updates, David. I don't have any updates this week. I Crystal? don't have any updates. Quiet. Uh, <laughs> board updates is the um, well, actually, date. I think uh, Jeff is going to probably. If do you have anything from the uh, senior center on? Did we po did they post a job yet? Um, they hadn't as of last the end of last week. They were finalizing the job description. Mm. Okay. Time for a search committee and everything for that, right? Well, can can we uh, can I ask that we schedule a meeting soon, or the board of oversight? Yeah. Uh, to to talk about, uh, I'd like to review their uh, the job description. Yep. And I also also like to uh, understand what we plan on doing for a facility for the uh, seniors also. Yep, and I know that they've. Um Deerfield and Waitley have been working on an alternate location in case the current senior center building can't be opened for environmental reasons um, to provide some services. But getting an update on how that works. Well, that's, that's an interesting concept. I just like to Okay. So, yeah, so I'd like to have a meeting to discuss that also. Yep. Okay. So, the senior center director and the uh, location would be my main thing. And I also think Jonathan was asked at the last meeting for uh, uh, board reorganization, the board, the board of oversight reorganization. How's that? Great. Okay. I think we're all set. Yep. Okay. Time administrator updates. Yes. Uh, the most important one, um, we got noticed that there's going to be uh, some flu clinics at the senior center. Um, the first one will be for seniors on September 30th. Um, and then on October 3rd for all ages, we're getting the information on our website. There's a form that people can fill out and return. Um, people who can also sign up on franklincountyvaccine.org um, or call 413-665-9508. Um, and... Um, Again, this is 
flu clinic. It's not vac uh, COVID vaccine. Right. So right. it's also important to get your flu shot. Yes, yes it is. Well, uh, the, and, and these flu shots, the, the first ones that for the 30, if they're scheduled, are an extra heavy dose correct. for the seniors. Right. So it's a senior dosing. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, so again, Town of Sunderland website, you can download the form online, franklincountyvaccine.org, or you can call 413-665-9508. That's going to be later in September and October, and we'll try and distribute more information as we get closer. Um, today, uh, the police chief, um, the admin assistant, and I it interviewed some people for the animal control officer position oh, right. so we're hoping to have a recommendation for you at the next meeting to hire a new person Good. um let's see so you had more than one applicant we did uh, no, i know yeah. that's good <laughs> um nobody has inquired about compensation yet so we'll see okay. um but they were very interested in the position very uh caring about animals both of them um so i think i think uh we're hopeful that we'll have a candidate in a couple of weeks um we are i'm meeting this week with the procurement officer from the franklin county regional region of governments um for the procurement for riverside park the big park grant um we're going to go over everything as people know, the cost of construction materials went up a lot and hopefully is leveling out, if not coming down. Um, so we had to go back on a, a couple of things and uh, value, do some value engineering. So it's a little bit behind where we hope to be at this point. Um, but our expectation is uh, sometime between the beginning and middle of October, um, having completed the procurement, have, being ready to sign a contract with a contractor and, and hopefully start site work this fall um, in preparation for string, uh, spring construction. Um, Probably the longer it takes to do that, the better with the pricing, the way it's going, you know? Except that we lose the grant funds after, after June 30th. Point, yeah, so <laughs> it's like catch 22. Gotta get done by then, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so with that we're hoping that that the delay will have will bring the bid prices in a little bit lower than, yeah. than they might have been a month ago. Um, and then just looking forward um, on September 27th, we tentatively have the uh, over under consultants on our rapid recovery plan coming back to do a final presentation um, of the, of their proposed plan. Good. Uh, and then on October 4th, um, the Open Space and Rec Recreation Ad Hoc Committee would come in to present the update to the Open Space and Rec Plan. Um, the Rapid Recovery Plan doesn't require any sort of endorsement or anything by the Select Board. The Open Space and Rec Plan does, and I'll have a, a letter drafted uh, to that effect saying to the state, please accept this. Okay. And that's what I got for this week. So, so you talked about the vaccinations for the flu vaccination, regular flu, not uh, COVID. I do know that they're talk, they're starting to talk about boosters for the COVID. And I know, I think next Monday, I start training for that because it was on prep mod and now they're going to color, the program called color. So okay, we're supposed to start. We're, so just let people know we're we're getting ready. We're yeah. I if they're so Franklin County is basically going to be ready if they decide to to roll out COVID. I think what they're saying boosters. October is the earliest, right? What's that? Was it October was the earliest that started? Probably right. I think uh, they didn't. You know, David. Sometimes I don't ask. They just say, <laughs> Tom, you need to take some training so you can do. Yeah work to clinics and I go okay and now it's called color instead of prep mod so last I knew it, they were suggesting like eight months after your yeah exactly initial ones. yeah yeah and I think I think right now. now for people with comorbidity talk to your yes, doctor exactly. but um, some people are eligible for booster shots or third doses depending on the vaccine you got um, now and I think 
what you're talking about is preparing for a clinic where clinic. everybody 65 and over can, right? Right. They start going through the phases like they did for the right. regular one. Yep. Yep. That's getting ready. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Anything else? No. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Anybody else on uh, the screen? Okay, without hearing anybody, um, just want to remind everyone that school school has started, so you will see buses out there. So if you're going, on the road. if you're going to work, you uh, may run into those buses, and just remember that when those got those little flashing red lights on, you're supposed to stop. That's right. Uh, you may. Um, may want to alter your time you're leaving or or you're leaving for work or coming home from work because those the yellow buses will be out um there will be kids in the crosswalks um there will be kids on the bicycles uh and there will be frazzled moms and dads Sorry. Uh, doing drop to get the, and pickups and trying to get the dunkin donuts for their first coffee after the kids so uh i, I would just say plan 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 accordingly um, I, I know um, our the one if if it could be called a good thing about the COVID period of time is that throughout the COVID our um, administration in the local elementary school and at our regional school has been at the top of the line. So Darius and Ben and their staff have done a wonderful job and allows allow parents to communicate and the school committee to do school committee stuff and and a a decisions made that you may not agree with but or you may agree with it but it's had an opportunity to vet it out in public so um, I I, uh, I think that they have been always one step ahead of what's ever happening, and and that's not easy. So I just like to uh, commend them for the work that they've done on that. So without hearing anything else, not seeing anyone else want to talk, I'll entertain a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I motion we adjourn. Second. Yeah, motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Jeff, that's three zero. Declare us out at seven. 17, please.